Yo, what's up, Sandals Church Youth? My name is Jared, and I am the youth lead at the East Valley Campus. And I just want to share something with you guys that I got from one of my personal um, devotional times. Um, but before we jump into the passage that we're going to be looking at, I want to share something really quickly with you guys. I think the idea of devos can be really intimidating for some of us, um, especially when we see videos like these ones. Uh, it might feel like our devos have to be this little mini sermon. But the reality is a, a devo is just simply a, a time of devotion. It's in the name, devotion. A devo is simply devoting time to God. That's it. Reading his word, spending time in prayer or talking to him. You could play worship music outside. You could do it in the quiet of your room. What's important is that you are devoting time to God. And the only reason that your youth leads have a prepped word for you like this is because they've first devoted time to God. They have simply taken the thing that they learned in their personal devotion. They have thought on it, cooked it up, and now they're serving it to you. My message really is that I don't want you guys to be scared of spending time with God. Just make an appointment and do it. All right, time for scripture. So I was reading through 2 Corinthians chapter five, and this chapter has one of my favorite verses in it, and it's actually the verse that we're gonna be putting a ton of focus on um, in this devotion. If you're not familiar with 2 Corinthians, it's a letter written by Paul to a church in the city of Corinth, and he's writing to a bunch of other Christians. And in chapter five, he starts by talking about a place that God has prepared for us. We're in the New Living Translation, and verse one says, for we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body uh, made for us by God himself and not by human hands. So the Christians that Paul was writing to understood that this statement, the fact that they were gonna have a new body and a new home for them in the heavens was only true because they believed in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So in an indirect way, Paul starts chapter five with the gospel, with the good news of Jesus, his earthly ministry and his death on the cross. He reminds people, remember guys, you are saved because of God's love for you. And our, our God is, is one of reconciliation. If you don't know what that means, it's, it's easiest to say man and God were friendly. We were dapping one another up, we were boys. But when man brought sin into the equation, we put some distance in the relationship. But lucky for us, God wants to bring us back into close relationship with him. He wants to re reconcile our relationship with him. He took something that we messed up and made it good again. And this whole idea of reconciliation makes me think of one of my favorite worship songs right now. It's Graves and Gardens by Elevation Worship. And this song is all about how God takes something that was one thing and turns it into to something totally different. The song lyrics state, you turn mourning into dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can do that. The song continues, you turn graves into gardens, bones into highways, or I'm sorry, bones into armies, seas into highways. You guys can tell how fired up the song gets me. You're the only one who can. And what's so rad is that it is no different with us. In verse 17, Paul writes, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life is begun. And that's super good news for us. That means that whatever state God found you in is dead and he's given you a brand new life with him. And guys, I promise you, this one's better. One of, the favorite, one of my favorite parts of that song is they say, there's nothing better than you. No, there's nothing better than you. But there's some action that we need to take after this amazing transformation. In verse nine and 10, Paul writes, so whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal is to please him, that's God. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. So we gotta strive to live a life that glorifies the God that saves us. When he takes you away from mourning and gives you a reason to dance, he doesn't want you to jump right back into mourning. When he, when he gives you beauty for your ashes, he doesn't want you to run back to the ash pile. When he turns that sea that is in front of you and that's in your way into a highway, 
He doesn't want you taking pictures of the water. He wants you to take the road that he created for you. So the idea is this, we don't get something better and then drop it to go back to that old piece of junk that we had before. Later on in the chapter, Paul says we are ambassadors for Christ. That means that I am sent by Christ. If you call yourself a Christian, you are sent by Christ. He's sponsoring us. He says, that guy or girl is with me. So when I read in verse 17 that I am a new creation, it better look like it. I need to look like I'm living differently than the world. I need to look and live like I am sent by Jesus. So I wanna end with this. If you were a Christian and you've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, the challenge is to get better. Every day look more and more like your savior, Jesus Christ. And if you've not been saved by the blood of Jesus, I'm gonna say that this might be the time for you to do it. So I'm gonna close with the time a quick prayer. And if you haven't been saved by Jesus, but you want to be in this moment, I would encourage you to take this moment here. So let's close out in a word of prayer real quick. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much um, for, for coming down, moving into our neighborhood, living a perfect life and dying a death that we deserve. God, thank you for offering your sacrifice to us so that our sins um, can no longer hold us down with chains, Lord, that we can break free from those chains be because of the blood that you shed. So God, I pray if there's anyone watching this that wants to know you and has not taken that step of faith, I ask that they would. I ask that you would meet them where they're at, that you would give them a brand new life, and just as it said, as they are walking in that new life, that they would strive to live a life that glorifies you. And Lord, I just pray that you'd bless everyone listening with this word and you would be with us and stir in our hearts um, as we go out and minister to your people. Amen. Well, Sandals Church, I love you guys. God bless you. And uh, until I see you next time.